Sutra at that time, Ananda and the Great Assembly filled with the subtle and wonderful instruction of the Buddha, the first come one, were peaceful in body and mind and were without obstructions. Everyone in the Great Assembly became aware of his or her mind pervaded the ten directions, beholding emptiness in the ten directions as one might look at a leaf or at an object held in one's hands. Commentary At that time, after the discussion of the seven elements, Ananda and the Great Assembly, the Great Ahas, the, the Holy Assembly, the Boat of Outflows, the Great Bishu Sangha, and the rest were filled with the subtle, wonderful instruction of the Buddha, the first come one. This most subtle and wonderful state, this most inconceivable doctrine, this drama, was the instruction given to the Great Assembly. The members of the Great Assembly, having obtained the world honored one subtle, wonderful instruction, were peaceful in body and mind. Peaceful means that basically there wasn't anything at all. Everything was empty, the dust had been washed away with water, and all that was left now was the light of the Buddha nature. This is to be peaceful. There isn't anything at all, everything is empty. Inside, there is no body or mind. Outside, there is no world. When one attains this state, there isn't anything at all. Why aren't we peaceful? Because we think we are still attached to our bodies. If someone says one sentence about us, we become afflicted. Whenever anyone is the least bit rude to us, we can't put it down. We are not at peace and they were without obstructions. Because they were peaceful, they were free of obstructions. They were not hindered by their bodies or their minds. Inside, there is no body and mind. Outside, there is no world. Therefore, there is no obstruction. Why are you obstructed? One of my disciples is always wondering if she is going to get a letter from her boyfriend or else she is busy writing to him. That's an obstruction. Why is she that way? Because she is not at peace in body and mind. She is hindered, so she can't put it down. If we are without obstruction, what benefit is there in hanging on to him anyway? You think of him every day until your hair turns white and your eyes blur and you get very old. There's no benefit in it. By this time, I'm no longer hindered by anything. In the past, when I was building temples in Hong Kong, my head turned white, but now it's turned black again. Since I'm not obstructed by anything, I lecture so trust for you now and it's simply lecturing. When I finish, I don't place any special meaning on it. I'm not attached. If some, some difficult problem arises, I think of a way to work it out at the time and once it's resolved, I don't worry about it. I forget about it, not intentionally, but naturally. Why? Because if you look upon everything as really important, you won't be able to put it down. If you look upon everything as being no problem, as being very ordinary, then there's nothing going on at all. If Mount Tai fell down before you, you wouldn't be surprised. That means that no matter what great calamity should occur, even if your house should fall in, you pay no attention. If you pay no attention, then even if it does fall down, it won't harm you. Why do things harm you? It's because you can't put them down. You are hindered by them. You get scared and so you get hurt. If you aren't afraid, if you have your wish about you, then it doesn't matter where you are. Everyone in the Great Assembly became aware. Everyone knew. I don't know whether everyone in the present Great Assembly is aware that his or her mind pervaded the ten directions. The minds filled up the Dharma realm in all the ten directions, beholding emptiness in the ten directions. Do you see the emptiness of the ten directions? What is it like? The emptiness of the ten directions is definitely not big. How big is it? 
one can see it as one might look at a leaf or at an object held in one's hands, seeing it is like looking at the palm of your hand. Leaf, the commentary says, refers to refers here to a page of Buddhist scripture, but that is not necessarily the case. It might be the leaf of a tree, the leaf of a flower, or any kind of leaf at all. It is an analogy, so it's basically not real to begin with. Object is a set in the commentary, so it refers to the Amala fruit, which exists in India but not in China. In general, the members of the Great Dharma Assembly awakened at that time to the principle that the emptiness throughout the ten directions and the entire experience was in their own minds. It was not beyond a single thought of the mind. So the mind drama is wonderful. So the ends of empty space throughout the drama realm, there is no place that the mind does not reach. Since the mind is that big, the grid is compressed into a small. You can see the, in, the emptiness of the ten directions as clearly as you can see something out in the palm of your own hand. Why is this? I tell you, all that time the members of the Dharma Assembly have all obtained the penetration of the heavenly eye. They have all obtained the wisdom eye. Therefore, they can perceive this state. They can perceive that the myriad dramas are only the mind and that the mind contains the myriad dramas. The mind contains the true and the false. What is it that holds both the true and the false? It is our true mind. Our true mind contains the true and false and is without a location. It exhausts empty space and pervades the drama realm. So where is it? It is neither there nor not there. Thus the mind contains the myriad dramas and the myriad dramas are just the mind. All dhammas arise from the mind. All dhammas are extinguished by the mind. When the mind arises, all dhammas arise. When the mind is extinguished, all dhammas are extinguished. Thus, the true mind is neither produced nor destroyed, and dhammas are also neither produced nor destroyed. So, you see, everyone in that good assembly, assembly became enlightened. If we haven't become enlightened, having heard the sutra up to this point, shouldn't we be ashamed? I'm not joking with you. People must get enlightened now. Whoever doesn't get enlightened will be beaten. I'm going to force you into it. Sutra, all the things that exist in the world were the wonderfully bright inherent mind of Bodhi. Commentary. At that time, the members of the Great Dharma Assembly were aware of the emptiness of the ten directions as if it were a leaf or an object held in their hands, and they also were aware that all the things that exist in the world were the wonderfully bright inherent mind of Bodhi. All are things in the Bodhi mind. Sutra, the essence of the mind, was completely pervading and contained the ten directions. Commentary The mind is the body mind. The essence of the mind was completely pervading. The subtle, wonderful principle of the body mind is completely pervading. There is no place it is not complete. It is without the slightest deficiency, so it is said to be completely pervading. If there's too much, it cannot be said to be complete. If there's too little, it is not complete either. There's just as much as this as there should be. Thus, according to living beings' minds, there is a response in the right amount that is to be completely pervading and contain the ten directions. The ten directions is just a figure of speech. Basically, it's not just ten directions, it pervades all places. Sutra, then they looked back upon their bodies, born of their parents, as a fine mold of dust blown about in the emptiness of the ten directions, sometimes visible, sometimes not, as a single bubble floating 
on the clear vast sea appearing from nowhere and disappearing into oblivion. They comprehended and knew for themselves and obtained their fundamental wonderful mind which is everlasting and cannot be extinguished. Commentary Then they looked back. Before they had looked out and they hadn't been able to see their own eyes but now they looked back and probably could see their own eyes. The Buddha said that one's seeing cannot see one's own face. So how is it that they can now see their own eyes? They have opened the heavenly eye. With the heavenly eye, you can see not on the outside but inside. When you look at your body, it is like a crystal container. You look in this crystal container and you can see what color your blood is. When you obtain the penetration of the heavenly eye, the wisdom eye, and the Buddha eye, you can see what is in every part of your body. You can see what sickness there is. The places where the blood and energy don't flow well. You can see inside and outside. At that time, the, the members of the Great Assembly looked upon the ten directions as upon something held in the palms of their hands, and they also saw the wooden stomachs. They saw the insides of their own bodies. Their bodies were the same size as the emptiness of the ten directions. Then why, you may ask, does it say that the body born from one's parents is like a fine mold of dust? The body that is just as big as the emptiness of the ten directions in the Dharma body. The flesh body is the retribution body, which is like one fine mold of dust in the emptiness of the ten directions. Wouldn't you say that this is as small as you can get? Thus, the sutra says that they looked back upon their bodies born of their parents, the unclean body given them by their parents as a fine mold of dust blown about in the emptiness of the ten directions, sometimes visible, sometimes not, as if suddenly they are suddenly gone like a lamp about to go out, but not yet gone, not yet gone, but having only a little light left. The body born of production and subject to extinction eventually will cease to be. Although it is here now, it will certainly be gone in the future. So the body is as if there as if gone. Its body is extremely perishable. So don't be so turned around by it, so attached to this very impure body which was born of your parents. Don't be so greedily fond of your body, so unable to put it down. You look upon this body as extremely valuable as extremely valuable when actually it's really useless. Not to be able to put down your own body is the greatest kind of waste. Each member of the Great Assembly saw his body as a single bubble floating on the clear vast sea as a little bubble bobbing on a very pure great sea, appearing from nowhere and disappearing into oblivion. It can't arise and isn't extinguished. Where does it come from? Where does it go to? It is without an origin. They comprehended and knew for themselves. Each person fully comprehended and was completely aware. And they all obtained their fundamental wonderful mind. They all obtained their fundamentally inherent, wonderfully bright mind, which is everlasting and cannot be extinguished. It is neither produced nor destroyed. Sutra, they bowed to the Buddha and placed their palms together. Having obtained what they had never had before, then facing the third common, Ananda spoke verses in praise of the Buddha. Commentary All the people in the world like to have people praise them and say they are good. There's nothing strange about that. People in the world who lack fame hear someone say, you're the best, you're number one, and they hold on to that number one and are incredibly happy. Now the Buddha's disciples also praise the Buddha. 
they bowed to the buddha and placed the palms together having obtained what they had never had before then facing the first come one before the buddha ananda spoke verses in praise of the buddha here ananda reveals his literary prowess again it's been so long since he's been able to display his erudition that he now wants to speak, speak some lines of verse in praise of the Buddha. Sutra, the wonderfully deep Dharani, the unmoving honored one, the foremost Surakama king, he seldom found in the world. Commentary, these first two lines of the verse that Ananda composed on the strength of his excellent scholarship and erudition praised the Buddha. The verse praises the Buddha, the drama and the Sangha, the words wonderfully deep Dadani, the unmoving honored one praised the Buddha. Wonderfully deep praises the Buddha's drama body which pervades all places. The word Dadani praises the Buddha's reward body which is like a Dharani. Dharani is a Sanskrit word which means to unite and maintain, to unite all dharmas and maintain all meanings. The Buddha's reward body is perfect and thus it is considered to be a Dharani. The word unmoving praises the Buddha's response bodies. The Buddha manifests whatever kind of body is needed to take people across by speaking dharma for them. That is, the Buddha manifests the body of a Buddha to teach, transform, and save living beings who should be taken across by the body of the Buddha. If they should be taken across by the body of a Pratika Buddha, the Buddha will manifest the body of a Pratika Buddha and take, some, take them across. If there are causes and conditions are such that they should be taken across by the body of a great elder. The, body, the Buddha manifests the body of a great elder to teach and transform them. Yet, though the Buddha manifests many response bodies, their basic substance is unmoving. They don't move from the Bodhimanda, yet they teach and transform living beings. Finally, the words honored one other name of the Buddha. The Buddha is called the world honored one. The foremost Suragama king is seldom found in the world. The words foremost Suragama king praise the drama which is seldom found in the world. The Buddha and the drama are rare indeed. The Buddha is rare in the world and the drama is rare in the world. Foremost means first. Ultimately, what is first? The Suragama king is first. It is the ultimately the rebel king of Samadhis, the great Suragama Samadhi. The Suragama Samadhi is the Dharma king among Samadhis. It is seldom found in the world. In fact, there is no other like it in the world, in the sentient world or the material world. Sutra It melts away my upside down thoughts gathered in a million compass. So I needn't endure a Sankhya errands to obtain the Dharma body. Commentary, it melts away, gets rid of my false upside down thoughts gathered in a million compass. One compass is 139,600 years, a thousand times 139,600 years is counted as a one small compass. Twenty small compass are reckoned as a middle-sized compass. Four middle-sized compass are the great compass. The million compass referred to here represent an unknowable amount of time, from time without beginning to the present. The upside-down thoughts that are melted away didn't begin to arise today or yesterday. They came from limitless limit this compass of girl, accumulated little by little. They are habitual. Habits are the basic substance of upside down thoughts. Habits make upside down thoughts grow. Upside down means that they take what is 
true as false and what is false as true. They take what is black as white and what is white as black. You tell them that something is white and they say it's black. They turn things upside down if people think one way. The upside down person will certainly think another way. He also always wants to have a special style. So I need him and your Asamkiya ends to obtain the Dharma body. Asamkiya is a Sanskrit word which means immeasurable. The great Asamkiya ends are required for the cultivation and accomplishment of Buddhahood to go from initial resolve to the first ground of a bodhisattva takes one asamkhya and the passage from the first ground to the strength ground also takes one asamkhya and the passage from the eighth ground to wonderful enlightenment the accomplishment of buddhahood takes a third asamkhya and how long a time is three immeasurable hands that number is a big number Ananda heard the subtle, wonderful Dhamma door that the Buddha was expressing and it enabled him to become enlightened. Since he had become enlightened, he didn't have to pass through such a long time as three great Asamkhya ends before he obtained the Dhamma body. But the obtaining referred to here is not certif certification. It is awakening to the principle of the Dharma body. He must cultivate further before he can be certified as having actually obtained the Dharma body. He has to progress in the development of skill. He knows that he need not pass through such a long time as three great Asamkhya ends before becoming a Buddha. He knows that he understands the pure nature and rise substance of the everlasting true mind. He knows that he himself and all his external forms and appearances are wonderful bright mind of the mind of the cherry of the first come one. Since he understands this, he knows he will very quickly accomplish Buddhahood.